So let's have a look here. Um, if you recognize this game, uh, don't forget to take two ibuprofen for your back because it is Mind Super, a really classic, quite old <laughs> game about uh, trying to find mines in a grid of numbers. Uh, so one tells you there should be one mine in this region and so on. Two will tell you that there must be two around it. Um, now, if you played Minesweeper before, you'll be thinking, oh, wait, hang on, you're supposed to click on them in the, uh, you should click over here and that reveals things. Oh, well, you can't quite do that natively in Excel without VBA. Uh, spreadsheets are a static object. They just calculate what's on screen and then they stop. If you want to detect a change and then change it again, you need some additional code to do that. And I haven't done that. It's a fairly straightforward thing. You just need to detect a change in your sheet and then copy this across. That's it should be fairly straightforward to do, but I've not implemented that. I just wanted to see if I could do it uh, with just the sheets alone. So that uh, sounds interesting. You know, like, share, subscribe, whatever. I don't, I don't care. I'm just doing this because it's fun and stupid and I'm a nerd. So let's unhide this and see what we're doing. Right, at the top here, I've got a field. Uh, it's 10 by 10 and there's some M's in it. I've labeled this uh, mine. So that's a named array. And they're just random M's in it. I can put more and more in there if I want. I want to, or I can delete some of them. Um, it's totaling them up as well with the count function. Uh, there's a correct and the number that have been triggered. Oops, so we'll undo that. Um, there being a number being triggered, uh, that's counting that up. I'll go through that in a second. Uh, down here, there's a another one called field. So here I've got a field. This is kind of generating what the game shows you. So basically, if I click into the formula, it becomes obvious what it's doing. It's looking up in the mines array. Uh, and if it's M, that's for a mine, it's replacing it with a flag character. Okay, fair enough, that's a straightforward one. If that's not true, we're going to ask it again of the number of M's around it in this three by three grid equal to zero. And if so, it's going to return blank. If not, um, it's going to return the number, the count of M in there. So that uh, that part won't trigger if there's an M already here. So the maximum can only really do is an eight. Uh, now you can do that with a dynamic array and some offset function. I think I did that with Adventure Code or something. So there's a way to do this in one shot, but it's a little bit more convoluted and frankly, it's just easier to drag and drop these and let the arrays move around uh, that way. So you could do this in a more complicated fancy way, but uh, drag and drop is fine. Uh, the numbers are colored through just conditional formatting. So if I, uh, you can see value 87654, we set the font color. That's a bit of an annoyance to set up, but you kind of need it because if you use conditional formatting and use your color scales, uh, it only really uh, colors the background. Your data bars will do something else. Icon sets don't really help either. So uh, I discounted all those and just had to do it manually. So there's eight conditional formatting rules to color it. Uh, but thankfully, if you just copy and paste down to here, it takes the formatting away. So once that's done, we've got an input field. I'll call that the input. It's an array, another 10 by 10 array. Uh, and that's completely blank. This is what a player just wants to put uh, letters into. And the letters we want are X to clear it or Z to flag it. And I've labeled these as well. So if we want, you know, we can, don't want to set it to that. Uh, you can set it to any key or letter combination you like. Uh, your player can control that. And I've labeled them just so the code looks a bit more intuitive as well. And then I've finally got the output one. So there you go, select, select output. And this is where the game is really being played. Um, if the number of explosions is greater than zero, I'll go back and just show how that's done. Now, um, this is some product, this one. So if the mines array is equal to M, make it one. If not, make it zero. And if the input array is the clear character, that's X in this case, make it one and zero. And then some product will multiply those together. So as that's put in as an array formula, um, 
it will do each cell kind of individually. So that's now equal to one, that's equal to zero. That's equal to zero, that's equal to one. They're gonna to multiply together to be zero. But if I put myself an M here, that top left is one, that top left is one, more than times one is one, they're gonna add up. And you, the more of these M's I put in here, you can see it goes up because I've got the X's here. Uh, the number correct is the exact same thing, actually. Mine's equal to M and the input is equal to the flag. So I'm working out the number that are correct as well as the number have been incorrectly detonated. So anyway, if that explosion is zero, uh, when the mines is equal to M, replace it with the uh, little Unicode explosion collision character. Uh, you can Google that one. It's basically an emoji. Oops, didn't do that. Uh, and if it isn't an M, replace it with whatever is in the field so you can see the number appearing. So if we trigger this off, you can see all the answers appear. But if we don't have that end game, we're going to a different one. Uh, if the input is the clear character, I replace it with whatever is on the field. So I've, uh, if I correctly hit X and don't trigger a mine, I'm copying the numbers from the, the input field here, the, this, this field, the, the, the mine field. And otherwise, if the input is a flag, whatever the flag character said, put the flag on there. If not, uh, blank it. Now, in Minesweeper, you do get the option to put a question mark just to kind of uh, hedge your bets on something. That's another thing that could just be coded in here as another if statement. That's uh, not beyond the wit of man to do. Uh, and that's basically the whole game. You only need VBA code to really transfer this over to here uh, when you change character. Uh, the only last final thing, there's a little win counter here. Uh, if the remaining is zero and the number of correct and the total mines uh, are equal to each other, present it as win. And there's a little bit of conditional formatting that will turn it all green. Uh, but oh, do you want to put Z on all of these to prove it <laughs> uh, that that does, all, that does the trick? Where am I up to? Oops. Another one there. Oh, where am I missing? No, oh, I've put too many in. Put them in the wrong direction. There you go. Well, I'm just copying that. So it turns out, turns out all green. Um, and I've won it. Uh, there we go. That, that's my Minesweeper in Excel without VBA. Um, so it's a little bit awkward without that extra bit of coding step, but uh, it's the starting point. This is what you'd have to do if you want to program the game uh, in a spreadsheet. Why would you want to do that? I don't know. Maybe you've just got a time management problem like me, or maybe you just like doing things that this was not designed to do.